I'm Don. Welcome to our studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. And of course, this channel will be dead without the support of my patrons. Today, we're painting a Creature Caster miniature for my Fine Scale Modeler magazine article. Today, I'll share with you my initial thoughts of the Army Painter War Paints Fanatic Paints as we paint this miniature. The proper video tutorial of this video of this project is at Patreon as usual. For new viewers of this channel, of my channel, I hope you don't get confused as I'll be talking about my initial impressions of the War Paints Fanatic paints while I paint this miniature. So as much as I want to grow my channel and talk 90% in front of the camera most of the time, much like the bigger channels, I'm too shy to do that. So I hope you don't get confused with my video format. This video is not a proper War Paints Fanatic tutorial or like review because I started the painting of this miniature with speed paints because I have a deadline. <laughs> However, during the latter part of the video, I use a lot of War Paints Fanatic paints. I use the metallics, a few of the regular paints, the effects paints, and of course the shades or the washes. The bottles of the Fanatic paints are harder and not brittle but harder than speed paints, which I like. It takes a little bit of effort to squeeze out paint, which is good because you don't squeeze out too much paint on your wet palette. The regular Fanatic paints are thick and creamy, which I also like. The Fanatic Paints, even if you let it on the wet palette overnight and you like cover your wet palette, the next day it's still very much usable because the binder does not separate from the pigments, which uh, I won't mention the brand, but a certain brand that I recently use, not Cuttlefish, but a, a, another brand, basically after a few minutes of staying on the wet palette, the pigment and the binder separates. The War Paints Fanatics does not. Basically, the pigments and the binder stay together on the wet palette. Now let's talk about the War Paints Fanatic washes. I have no idea if the current War Paints Fanatic washes are reformulated in comparison to the older War Paints washes or just relabeled but I really like them. The Fanatic Washes has just the right amount of saturation for me. You do not use this for base colors, of course, like the Speed Paints, but they add more color depth and very nice shades to your painting. In terms of saturation, the washes are comparable with Citadel shades, which are very good. However, a few, just a few, Citadel shades kind of dry faster or and then of course some Citadel shades are kind of super strong in terms of saturation. The Fanatic washes are consistent in terms of saturation or coverage. Depending on the coverage of the washes that you want to achieve, well basically you may want to apply a couple of passes letting each pass dry before you apply another coat. Also, the washer seems to dry a little bit slower, which is really good because you have the time to blend the edges so that you don't have coffee stains. You may notice in the video that I kind of like applying the new War Paints Fanatic shades on top of the Speed Paints. It adds a little bit more hmm, contrast and of course color depth. Of course, you could apply another layer of speed paints on top of speed paints, but I would recommend that you thin it down with speed paint medium because too much layering with speed paints will dramatically darken your painting. So using the Fanatic washes, maybe add a little amount of speed paints is a really good wash to add more contrast and color depth to your painting. 
Lastly, I like the color design of the washes. They're not too dark and some are bright enough to add more colors to your painting but not too dark. And they did not create some really light washes which are hmm, takes a while to build up. The dark skin shade and this dark blue tone is like a couple of my new favorites. They just, they, they have the perfect amount of saturation and they darken and add contrast to your painting. I love these colors. Now we move on to layering. Layering with Warpaints Fanatic. I must admit, like... Painting with War Paints Fanatic for the first time for this project slowed me down. It took me almost 3 days to finish this model. Basically, I was really observing the nuances of the paints and how they apply on the miniature and of course how they look like when they dry. I think it will take me months or maybe even a year to really hmm, be comfortable with using the War Paints Fanatic because the coverage as promised by army painter is, is is super good now this is not really a good analogy of how of the coverage of our paints fanatic but for example a few of the brands well most of the brands the regular paints it, it feels like you're painting with pencil and it, it's the coverage is not that good you need like at least a couple of passes to get a good coverage. With Army Painter, it feels like you're painting with um, pencil pen or markers. The Fanatic Paints dissolves well with water, but it really like you could really maximize your painting with the stabilizer and of course the retarder. And now the metallics. The metallics are awesome. It's like you could see in the video, I'm practically drawing with this metallic paints. Honestly, I was skeptical with the coverage of the metallics because I have yet to really use good metallics that has really good coverage. It usually takes at least, at the very least, a couple of passes to get a really nice gold. This means that it's kind of difficult to create texturing or scratches with painting with metallics. With this one, I hope you could see that it's, it's the coverage is super good. I practically is, I'm, I'm practically sketching with the metallic paints. And now we paint with the silvers, mithril and plate something something, <laughs> a dar darker than mithril silver. So you could also see that the coverage is insane. It's actually scary. It's scary because if you like create a mistake, again, it's like painting with markers. And that mistake, you could only like undo if you cover it up with another color or another paint. Because again, the metallics, much like the regular Fanatic paints, has crazy coverage. Now you could see me paint the blue armor or the dark greenish blue armor and I'm practically drawing the War Paints Fanatic paint. I actually use this, I think this is the saturated blue greens and I kind of use the whole triad to paint the armor. Needless to say, the six color triad work like a charm. It may seem that you don't need six colors but you will want it. Now the glazing. The glazing is not really a problem, but I'm used to using my cuttlefish colors, which are pre-glazed paints. With fanatic paints, you have to thin it down so much so that you create a glaze paint. This is because of the coverage. The coverage is so good, even if you thin it a lot, it will still it will still not look like or will not act like a glaze paint. I think a quick solution for this is I should mix my glaze paints, my glaze fanatic paints like on a mixing dish because it will eat up a lot of my wet palette space if I create a glaze paint on the wet palette. Now you see in the video, I'm using the Verdigris FX paints. 
and it was kind of funny to use so because I'm so used to like effects paints that are very glazy very hmm the coverage is not this good even the rust effects it kind of like practically you could also draw with this effects paints so basically army painter made all of the paints even the washes well not so much the washes but the metallics the regular paints and even this effects paints like cover really well the coverage is insane i cannot tell you how much like the coverage is so good it's it's so good for painting the stitches and all the details of this model now we are highlighting with brain matter beige which is a very nice color because it's not as yellowish as ivory yet it is not white but i'm used to glaze layering my highlights so this color this paint i had to thin it roughly around one is to one with water but i hope you could see in the video that even a thin down brain matter beige is very opaque you could still see like the effects of the paint and like you could practically draw some textures with a thinned down fanatics paint now i'm basically just touching up doing finishing touches with washes with glazes to like finalize the painting after painting all of the details of the model and adding my final shades, I decided to add a gloss varnish to some areas of the model. Now the gloss varnish is very clear and the smell, I mean the smell, it smells durable. The Warpaint's Fanatic Gloss Varnish is the glossiest varnish that I have ever used. Now before our reveal, I just want to thank all my patrons. Without my patrons, this channel will die a slow death. So okay, let's summarize. Although I must admit I started the painting of this model with speed paints. My future, like a few of my future videos, will paint mostly or not mostly just with War Paints Fanatic Paints. And those will be a proper tutorial about using Warpaints Fanatic. Now the Warpaints Fanatic, the consistency is creamy and kind of thick. It feels like painting with oils to be honest, especially when you're highlighting and stuff like that. Because it's very creamy, it flows really well on the model even though it's thick. One weird like aspect of Warpaints Fanatic is that if you don't thin enough, and you paint a thick layer on the surface of the model, it doesn't feel like you're dragging the paint on the surface of the model. It lays down super smooth, even though the paint is unthinned and very thick. Now, it's actually easy to find the sweet spot when painting with War Paints Fanatic because even if you overthin them, the coverage remains very good. Other than painting the base colors of your models with War Paints Fanatic, I think the main strengths of this paint is that it's so much easier to paint metallics and to layer up because of the triad system and practically your sketching paints like sketching will be super fun with this paints because the like it registers so well on the surface of the model and of course this will be perfect like with this one the painting of the stitches the tiny details you don't have to paint those in two passes you just need to paint them in one pass just select the perfect color for for all those details so you finish faster basically you'll be painting more efficiently and you'll supposedly like produce better painting with these paints now the triad system works like a charm however i need to like put up a video that will showcase the strength in one of my future videos so in my opinion although i'm sponsored so you could hear in my voice i tried so hard to sound like i'm not biased but <laughs> basically the paints are as good as advertised so basically, I'm kind of sad because I love my Speed Paints 2.0, but my future videos after this video will feature the War Paints Fanatic a lot more.
That's it, Pansit. I hope you like this video. Until next video, guys. Cheers!